What's up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, you know for the past couple of weeks I've been discussing Leet Code and how it's not really a great tool to actually filter candidates based off their technical skill set and actual abilities. It doesn't really measure how well they can perform, rather it measures how much free time they have to grind similar types of problems that they've likely memorized over and over again. Today's video is about a tool that was actually introduced to me by a viewer around a week ago that has allowed people to cheat their way into Fang. Now, I'm actually surprised not many people have been talking about this on Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube, because this seems like a really, really, really big deal breaker for companies that are currently screening candidates based off of lead code. What do I mean by that? Is this tool a way to simply become a better developer, become better at lead code? No. It's a tool that can actively be used in the interview to feed you answers to questions that are asked to you in that live interview code setting. Let's take a look together at an email that a subscriber of mine has sent me with regards to the Lead Code interview. In the last decade, Lead Code played gatekeeper to Fang. I think the Lead Code era will soon be over. Companies will demand a strong evidence of raw technical ability in past work. Doing 500 Lead Code problems won't get you through the door. Companies will see what projects you've built. Do you have a grasp on the foundations? To give you an example, Amazon is pretty freaked out about this tool, interviewcoder.co. You can see how easy it is to game the lead code interview. Recruiters know it too. Pretty sure they're looking at different solutions. Now when I clicked on that person's link, I was immediately transported to a webpage that's title says F lead code. I was like, okay, I need to keep reading this, what's going on? So I scrolled down and I noticed that there was a person that built this product that effectively allows you to screenshot questions that are placed in lead code like interviews feed them into an AI, and have them spit out solutions in real time. Now, I wasn't sure how strong this tool was, so I was initially skeptical. So I scrolled down and I saw proof. Throughout this whole video, you'll see me use Interview Coder for both the OA and the final round. So I watched the whole uncut version of this and I was mind blown. So what this person's doing is he's screenshotting the questions, he's been giving real time solutions with whatever tool that he's built here, and he's able to pass the interview in real time. So he was able to pass the meta interview, the Amazon interview, and, and, and he's been given offers. And to me, that was mind blowing. When I was at my previous company, I asked the recruiting team, what is the strategy we're using to combat people that are using AI to solve these problems? One of the approaches or one of the things that was told to me by AI was literally, we are going to inevitably have people that use AI to pass some of these rounds but we're hoping to catch the cheaters in the in-person interview. Furthermore, they expanded on the fact that there are some questions that I think lead code or hacker rank or whatever tool that we were using to screen candidates, Mark says AI has not yet been able to solve this problem. So even platforms like lead code, hacker rank, et cetera, they even recognize that some of these problems can be solved by AI and recruiters are intentionally picking problems that have yet to be solved by AI or that haven't been solved by AI to include in their online assessments and in their actual you know, face-to-face -face technical rounds. Now, when I saw this tool, something that immediately came to mind was a study conducted by interviewing.io. What did the study investigate? It investigated how likely it is to pass an online technical screen cheating. So what did they do? They created a study that broke up two separate groups of engineers, those that cheat and those that don't cheat. The cheaters were able to use ChatGPT to solve one of three different types of problems, either a verbatim lead code problem, a modified lead code problem, or a custom question. The non-cheaters were given a random question from one of these three categories. And their discovery is really shocking. Let's take a look at their results together. So if you scroll all the way on this interviewing.io study, you'll see what the actual results were. And there is actually something even more interesting than the results right below this. So the control group, they found that when interviewees were not cheating and given one question in the random grouping of questions, they actually passed their interviews at a 53% rate. Then there were candidates that were cheating and they actually took a look at the breakdown of success rate by category of question that they were given. The cheaters that were given the verbatim problem were able to solve it using AI or ChatGPT like tools at a 73% rate. The modified questions were able to be solved at a 67% rate, but the actual pass rate dramatically decreased from 67 to 25% when given a custom question. This is actually congruent with my own personal interviewing journey, as well as as an interviewer, 
the sorts of different types of tools that were used to try to catch cheaters, and that was implementing custom questions. I had two stages of interviews back in 2023 and in 2024, and there's a very stark difference in the frequency of custom questions that I've seen interviewing in 2024, and I think in large part is because a lot of companies recognize that some candidates are just gonna try to cheat their way in. In 2024, there was a large uptick in the amount of custom questions that I've seen in the quantitative trading space being given in online assessments and those in-person technical interviews. Let's take a look and scroll down to see something that's even more surprising in my opinion. Okay, so yeah, the verbatim, the modified questions, yada yada, custom questions. Not only is it statistically significant, not only is it statistically significantly smaller than the other two treatment groups, it is significantly lower than the control. When you ask candidates fully custom questions, they perform worse than they do when they're not cheating and getting asked lead code style questions. So a cheater given a custom question performs worse than a non-cheater. To me, what's actually even more interesting than all of this is that nobody was caught cheating. Unfortunately for the cheaters and for the people that are conducting these interviews, the worst thing that can happen to a cheater is that they're effectively kicked out of the interview. And I don't mean blacklisted. I don't mean that they are marked as a cheater for life. I mean, they just effectively fail. Okay, I'll try next time. In my opinion, if you're caught cheating, you should be banned from ever interviewing with that company to begin with. And when I'm interviewing candidates, if to me at least, it's very obvious if somebody's cheating. They write a piece of code, I ask them to explain it, they don't know how to explain it. Or they are looking all over their screen and it's like they have no idea what's going on. Or they're pulling up prompts and I see the colors on their screen as a reflection in their glasses changing because they're typing something in chat GPT and I can tell that it's then spitting out the answer. But unfortunately, what it says here is that interviewer confidence in the correctness of their assessment was high, with 72% saying they were confident in their hiring decision. So not only are cheaters not getting caught, interviewers are being fooled. Now I would like to think that I'd be able to personally catch a cheater if I was watching them interview, but absent of really them being an in, in an in-person interview, I might actually be falling into this category of interview interviewers that thought that they were actually vetting a competent candidate. I'm really curious as to what you guys think about tools like this. I want to leave on a closing thought of mine, which is while some people might be able to use tools like this to actually fluke their way or really cheat their way into landing a six figure job, that's really just the first step. There is no substitute for actually getting cracked because when the time comes where you need to perform, AI is not going to be there to hold your hand. If your boss needs a custom backend solution to integrate flawlessly into the current infrastructure, there's no substitute for learning how to code, knowing how to read other people's code, and being brilliant at writing your own code and delivering fast, scalable solutions to problems that are niche and that haven't already been solved by other people that some model can just parse out for you.